Hi, everybody. We'll uh, just seeing a few more people just connecting there. So we'll let everyone get connected. Firstly, we're going to be talking about checkmates. If anyone's got a beer in front of them already, already cracked into it, uh, this will be the beer we'll be talking through first. Um, so my name's James. For those who've just joined for the first time, I'm the export manager over at Thornbridge Brewery. Uh, joined by Russell, our taproom manager, and Charlotte, who's managing our social media. She's looking after us tonight. Uh, we're very lucky to be joined by Radim, the global brand ambassador for Budvar, uh, and Carl, the production manager for Wiper and True as well. So we've got a couple of collabs now box this month, both, of course, very exciting ones. Uh, and the guys have, you know, very politely agreed. Radim is in a pub over in the Czech Republic as we speak. So um, he's very politely jumped on the call with us. He's going to talk us through the beer and then jump back off and uh, get back to work. So thank you for taking the time to join us. So I don't want to take any more of your time. So Radim, it's um, good to have you on. We've got our beer here that we've brewed together. Please, you know, tell us a bit about Budvar. Tell us a bit about the collab and everything that you've been putting into it as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Sorry for the noise in the background. Uh, first of all, I want to say, you know, I'm, I'm super glad that uh, uh, I've got a chance to sort of assemble these with, with, with you all, because uh, the, this project is something that we've been super, super excited for for quite a long time. Uh, the project started in November. Uh, us, as a, as a national brewery of Czech Republic, uh, we've been looking around for the past couple of, couple of years, and uh, we've been seeing that, uh, you know, there's lots of, lots of, lots of, breweries trying to do lager, especially chicken spare lager. And they thought, you know, why not to bring the experience uh, to the people or to the breweries? And uh, for us, when when, uh, when we were looking at the, the UK uh, beer scene, craft beer scene, we thought like Thornbridge uh, would be a great partner. Not only, you know, Thornbridge has been around for quite some time, but they've only, they were, they're also the, the pioneers of, of craft beer brewing and uh, they said, it's sort of a you know we got sorts of similar things together um and um uh, we said you know why not to do it and then uh we were you know we're blessed by by the Tombridge guys saying let's let's do the thing uh we brought them over last November and uh just to sort of show what what we do and our ethos is quite uh, aligned and then uh we said okay so what what shall we brew <laughs> The, the lager was a clear choice because you only do lagers in uh, in Budvar Brewery, and um, and then uh, after quite uh, extensive conversations, uh, we said, you know, why not to bring something on the table that it's not only our expertise and then 120 years of making lager, but also you know we want to learn. We want to learn about other brewing cultures. We want to learn about other brewing ingredients, and uh, what came out of this was uh, checkmates. And checkmates, it, it represents the the best of both cultures. So, you know, it's a there we go. So it's a we use we use we use Mars Otter malt, which is a, you know one of the most used uh, sort of malts in the UK. We use East Kent Goldings for the floral, you know, slightly spicier, a little bit of woody uh, woody flavor to it. And we use the decoction machine, the single decoction machine. Which was super challenging because uh the British brewing equipment is not very well equipped to do uh decoction. But after a couple of hours <laughs> hours spent at the Thornbridge Brewery, uh we managed to sort of uh, align that and uh and we employed another sort of a check um uh check approach which was a long lagering. So uh the uh, the check base is lagered for six weeks, which is quite extensive compared to most of the craft lagers on the market. And you know it's it's what what you what you tasting today is it's a beautiful, like, I'd say experience. Yeah, last week when we sampled it because it was just released last week, and we launched it at the Thornbridge Brewery. Uh, we hooked onto the keg and we took both brewmasters and uh, the guys from production. Uh, we poured we poured it a check way into glasses and also foam as we like to do in Czech Republic, and then I gave the glasses to everyone and then I I just waited. I was like. I looked back and I, I, I was looking at everyone uh, sampling the, the beer and then, you know, uh, the actions will tell you more than a thousand words. And when, when you saw both of the brewmasters, they, 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 uh, their eyes lighting up, I was like, fuck yeah, this, this is going to work. And then I sampled it. I was like, so, so happy with the result. So, yeah, it, it all came together and, you know, I've tried so many lagers in my life and I think that this is, uh, I wouldn't think of this as a chick lager. 
I would think of this as a, a British lager. And uh, what, what, what I what I believe and I hope for that, you know, finally British lager is going to make its own category. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'd agree. It's been a fantastic experience, as you say, working together um, from having you guys over to the brewery to see, you know, what our kid will do, how it'll work with the styles that you brew. And everything else the whole experience has been fantastic and then as you mentioned launching it last week and being able to taste it in bakewell properly on tap of course you came and were pouring it properly for us as well um which was fantastic as you know the sun was shining we had our big check glasses as well it was really good way to launch it and um yeah i mean all the responses so far hopefully people are enjoying it on the chat here as well goes well with um it's sourdough pizza people saying this is nice even for non-lager drinkers too so um yeah that's it we're hoping you know with both breweries together we're going to reach people who might not have tried our beers before or people just looking for a really high quality british you know czech crossover really so um yeah it's, it's been fantastic radim uh for, for, for me like I, I can i can i can say that the it comes right in the right season you know when the beer gardens are open this this is definitely the special beer that mm. you can on a you know thursday afternoon after work you're gonna have it with your dinner on a, on a friday night or you're gonna have it with a barbecue on a sunday super bears is out super drinkable you know so 4.8 percent you, you, you can have a couple of doesn't tip you off and you know for me i'm, I'm so so happy and so last last week I would say I drank like a small thirty liter liter keg and I'm you know, I'm still dreaming about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think you're the only one after uh, last week as well. So I know um the guys you know we did our launch events around the UK and every person who came up and tried it said very similar things. So it's been a great success so far. We're sending it out around the country. Uh, the first batch of cans came in and went straight out. So everyone was lucky, you know, with the beer club, we made sure, of course, everyone got some cans, uh, but it came and went so quick. We are brewing more, don't worry. You will see more. You'll be able to get some for the gardens in the summertime too. But yeah, it's been fantastic so far. And so, so part <laughs> of feedback, feedback seems, seems great, especially from people that don't drink lager. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the feedback so far is coming in nicely but that's it it's again it's that finding that nice middle ground maybe of people who wouldn't have tried it otherwise too so um yeah brilliant thank you adam is there anything um of course we can find budvar beers all over the uk at the moment is there any particular favorites that you'd suggest people to seek out uh, from the range that you have there honestly I, I would i would just say because uh there was some misconception about us doing a collaboration because obviously you know we got into history and we don't do many collaborations so for the people that know that this is this is a one-off, it probably is going to be rebrewed because the, the demand is for that, the beer is banging. Um, but they, in general, like you know, go out, sample this. And uh, if you if you see my favorite Jaipur, <laughs> make sure wow. if you try it. I always love to do the comparison on the cask and on the tap. But if you see Budvar around, I think you know, for me at the season, I like the Budvar and the filter, four percent mm -hmm. filter uh, super special in the summer. You know, it's it's totally different that what you what you try with checkmates, but equally both beers are just balanced and and, and drinkable. So that's all for me. <laughs> yeah. No, it would be the summer of Budvar for sure, either way, I think, making sure we try it everywhere as well. So well, uh thank you, Radim. Like I said, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I know you have you're busy over there. Thank you for giving us the authentic experience from a pub in the Czech Republic too. So Thanks a lot, and uh, everyone have a great evening. Uh, I, I need to shoot on. That's uh, just a busy life. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Well, take care, Adam. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers. Well, uh, hopefully, as I say, of course, the um, we've seen lots of uh, nice comments in the chat already, so thank you for that. Um, it was good to have Radim, again, like say, authentically tuning in from the pub over there while he's working back in the Czech Republic, usually based here in the UK or... Uh, as I mentioned, he's the global brand ambassador, so all over the place as well, too. So it's nice to get him on chatting to us as well. Um, Budvar Dark, says Steve. Yeah, certainly. If you keep an eye out for any other Budvar beers, uh, maybe you've tried them already, of course, and then trying out, or you haven't tried them yet. They're, as you could imagine, fantastic beers to, to work through as well. So we're very lucky to do that collaboration brew there. And of course, not the only collaboration brew that we have this month. So we also have Carl, a production manager from Wiper and True, joining us from Bristol as well. So- Let me grab it from the fridge, eh? Two seconds. 
Sure, no problem. Well, Carl Wells here joining us as well. He's just grabbing his beer. So we'll, in the meantime, talk a little bit about this one. So um, we love doing all these collabs. The chance to do two in one month is fantastic. We can talk to different breweries, work things out, get on with, you know, new ingredients, new ways of brewing, as we mentioned there as well. Um, and this one already has been going down very nicely for anyone who's tried it. It's a little bit special, a little different. Um, and Wine and True have been a brewery for a long time. You know, we've looked up to here, so it was great to be able to work together. Um, did you find your beer there, Carl? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. I got right. it. Good. Well, um, I mean, Carl, if you don't mind as well, I know most people, of course, will know Wiper and True and things, but could you give us a bit of a, an overview? Some yeah, so, so, uh, so Wiper and True's, uh, it's 10 now. So if think going for 10 years, I've worked there for seven uh, of those 10. It's a pretty different place to when it started. So when I first started, we were like, like bottling out of IBCs and things of that sort of nature. And it's a, now it's a bit more of a streamlined beast. Um, we make historically sort of pale ales, made a lot of amber ales, a lot of stouts from Bristol. Um, and as the time's gone on, we make quite a lot of pale ales, still quite a lot of stouts, a few lagers, a lot of sours. Um, and not so much on the amber ales. Um, but we, so I got two emails on the same day, which is pretty fun. Um, the one was about the Thornbridge collab and one was from one of our brewers, James. Um, he is, he's a very nice bloke. Um, he came over from New Zealand um, recently. He was a brewer over there. He's come over and it was an idea for what, I don't know, what was it? Why mayor? I forgot wire mayor in my head. What was it? Yes, wire mayor. Look at that memory. Wire mayor and rye. So we do an amber series. Um, so uh, more of like a American brown with rye. <laughs> um, I I really like putting rye in 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 beers. Um, there's like a like a McKellar beer from like years ago they did with a burger restaurant, and it was like maybe like thirty percent rye pale. And they designed it to like cut through like meat and like really like juicy things. And I always like have it in my head that like rye in the beer and that sharpness. Um, so it was to make a wire mayor and rye amber ale. And then the next email up was a Thornbridge collab. And I was like, I'm just going to forward that one on. <laughs> um, so we took that and then we decided to make it more of a ESB, slightly higher ABV, maybe go like slightly more on the lean of like less of a, um, a super sweet amber ale and more of a complex bitter. Heat the wine there, bit of amarillo to sort of highlight those caramel notes. So like the orange and the caramel sort of getting in together with the rye to like try and get some sharpness in there as well. Again, like you're trying to complement the amarillo and the wine mm -hmm. Um And I think it, it sort of did what it said on the tin. Everyone was really excited about um, like Jaipur and beers that like are coming out that that are still quite crystal clear and like quite defined bitterness. And um, a lot of what we make is quite low bitterness and getting those sort of like sharp notes and then, but rounding it off with like some sort of balanced complexity and bitterness is, was quite important. And um, so that's sort of how we got there. Um, and I think it sort of achieves quite a lot of those things. I think. Yeah. I would it's, agree. It's um, a good fortune really to have those emails arrive at the same time. I think mm. when they, create something nice for us most of those emails are like pretty left field email like uh what what we want to make so it was quite it was quite a nuanced like thing um and then yeah so when I, then I came up and we brewed it where uh, on on brew day i think i was about as helpful as a chocolate teapot though i just sort of stood around and drunk tea and like looked over with wonder at all your buildings um but yeah yeah it reminds me a lot I, we made a um, india brown ale one time Mm -hmm. I feel like if I mention it enough times on <laughs> things, they let me brew it again. It was like really nice, like mm -hmm. a brown copper ale with like those big sort of IPA bitterness. And yeah, sort of on the region of that, which is like really enjoyable actually. In yeah, the... I agree. That kind of amber to red ale to India brown, like yeah, yeah. we we do them fairly regularly as well. We had a seven point four India brown ale a few years ago that was really mm. nice, like that maltiness, the hoppy like fruitiness coming into um i think yeah. that's a that's, that's a fun little region of craft beer from mm. like 2012 that mm -hmm. like hasn't fully come back around yet but it's coming 
It's got yeah. to everyone's going to be making <laughs> India brown ales. Got to be. Got to Hopefully. Be. Yeah, I think it'd be nice if they do. And actually, one, so as a production manager, you know, I'm on the sales side, so um, we always like doing rye beers, but it's always, you know, brewers will tell me that, oh, it's too much, it knocks everything out, it takes sure. too long to get out of the tanks and everything. Is it? Is that not true? Is that just made up now? So, I don't know. It just depends. I, I, it's quite interesting you say that. I, I, so, so before I was production manager, mm -hmm. in a past life, I was actually a salesperson. Um, and I remember phoning someone once and they said, I was like, right, we've got this thing. It's called a rye mild. Do you mm -hmm. want to buy any? And they went, Carl, you will not sell a single cast of something that's called rye and mild. And, uh, then they just went, don't even try, just give up Carl. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, it's interesting. You think you can sell it. I'm going to take that bit of information back to our sales team. And no, put rye. yeah. We could, we can. We've done rye beers over the years. We get the other way where the brewers say throw us <laughs> off and we're going for rye beers. Uh, I need to get sort of the equipment out. You see, it's an equipment fault problem, I reckon. There you go. Well, yeah, I'll say that next time. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like Carl can louter pretty good yeah. with rye, hey? I wonder what he's doing different. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. We'll do that. Um, <laughs> but we're getting some good, uh, there we are. We're getting a new tap room at the market is great. Says Carl. Yeah. So, so we moved to a new brewery in the last year and if anyone is in bristol i strongly advise it it's uh it's a very nice space um i think we were in a tap room that felt very much like a we moved everything out the way and built a little tap room in the on a friday night and our new space is sort of it has sort of like inclusivity and sort of communities and like at its whole so the way it's all laid out and the way it flows and all the rest of it and it it's sort of over the years become like quite its own beast and it's it's a really beautiful place to sit and drink beer actually it's um everyone's super proud of it um and you can see the brewery which is also very shiny and new and has a nice floor these are brewer things brewers look at the floors they go oh it's a nice floor that you know uh through the window but yeah that's pretty good um and then um, you've got uh, the name, of course, was, uh, well, I mean, as you can sort of imagine, you know, with the rye, that nice kind of, you know, spicy, that sort of thing is classically what you talk about with that. We've got the nice fire on the front there. Mm -hmm. So Bex, our uh, new creative, well, newish now creatively put that together. And then, uh, yeah, we thought it, it, you know, went nicely with the thought of sitting there, just drinking this and really savoring it in an evening. Of course, now it's bright summertime, but it still should hopefully work. I think it's the mild month of May. I have you know, that's what they yeah. say. So yeah, I think it, it does. It does does what it says on the turn in the, in that sort of that sort of sense. And then I don't know where the name came from, but I, I can I could dig it. And then it's is it foil on the label? Is it proper yeah. foil? Gold foil on the front. Yeah, that's fun, isn't it? Yeah. So just a nice bit of uh, gave you guys that little extra embossing yeah. on the logo as well. I like that. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. Yeah. What does inspired by the Peak District mean? So um, it is an official logo of the Peak District National Park itself. So because we're a Peak District product, um, right. we put it on that. So, I mean, you know, we export into 40 different countries. We sell all around the UK. So it's something we've teamed up with them. We're proud of our Peak District heritage and location. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that now is on all of those products. So they're able to, you know, it goes out. People are reading that and think, oh, Peak District, look it up and then uh, come and visit us, hopefully. Oh, great. That's fantastic. I dig that. I dig that a lot. Yeah. So something, yeah, we have on all our cans now as well and everything else that makes it out and about. Um, Aled uh, had this on Sunday while smoking a brisket. Oh, nice. Mm. That sounds like a good collab there um end of a sunny evening just as the sun is going down yeah exactly and then we've got as mentioned that embers the nice just relaxing in your garden definitely an evening wind down sort of beer i think as well um colin yeah went to the new uh new market venue second weekend it was open so yeah we've had some uh good responses there to your new tap room as well um Paul saying uh, so many good ESBs around at the moment. Would you say it's in in vogue? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you know what we, we we talk about it quite a lot actually? There's um uh we so Day has done a really amazing best bit of cask mm -hmm. and it's fantastic. And I've been like, if you see it, I'd like strongly advise hunting it down. And then Burden also did like they've got like three cask beers out at the moment that are really really good. And there's something really nice about that that bit of 
English brewing coming back round. Um, mm-hmm. we we just did a mild and we got a best and um, we I don't know, how much of a tangent can you go off on? <laughs> Is it like all right? So there's there's a thing I don't know. It, I assume there's people of the brewing knowledge uh, that might remember them if you're of the older age. There are things called the Firkin breweries, um, and they were like pubs mm-hmm. that a gentleman put brew kits in the back. And then he made, I think, about 27 of them. Um, and this was in the 90s. So this is sort of pre-craft beer, but I think it's I think it, if you, like it's quite genesis of craft beer sort of vibe. And he gave him a little book with about 10 recipes in it called the Firkin book. Mm-hmm. And then he just left. And then they were allowed to brew whatever they wanted. They had to brew Dog Bolter, which was like this best bitter, mm-hmm. um, sat about 6 7%. And then everything else they were brewing were these sort of traditional styles and that, like starting to riff on them and like every like people were trading beers and it became sort of like a little culture of the, its own beast and that sort of interesting bit of time in english brewing where you know it's not super hot forward american pale ales it's it is best bitters and milds and old ales and those things and what people were doing on a small level craft brewing and creating them um so a, a lot of that stuff is i think it's coming back around in a really nice way um and then like english ingredients are like really phenomenal in a lot of ways and like the lager the jet lager i was like cracking up at, like i was trying to guess what hop ig is to make that um and like ekg would probably be up there um but yeah if you can make a good lager with it it's quite quite an interesting beast now isn't it yeah that's it and you know they they're coming a long way those classic kind of english hops but also the modern ones as well you know jester and things like that coming out now too um but it's been yeah i think i'd agree with you it is coming back it is fashionable Uh, people want um you know they want to show some respect maybe even to drinking these traditional beer styles that have been around a long time i know a lot of our brewers do like that they say okay this brewery's been around 50 years they brew this fantastic style so we're going to start drinking more of these again and show them to new people coming through yeah i don't know like, there's 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 definitely people who've started in the brewery that have come mm-hmm. through the craft beer and they've like started a brewery with like a lot of positivity and you ask them if they ever tried bass and they say no and you're like no nah, no nah, you need to yeah. need to go drink some bass because mm-hmm. it will you're like you understand like bass sort of understand something in a weird way because of how long they've been brewing it it's it, it's a kind of beer of, of its own description over here um so yeah a bit of respect for heritage in that way is, is really really lovely i remember a few years ago we did a fuller's collab mm-hmm. uh, maybe like what maybe like five years ago and yeah. they, they let us use their yeast i had to sign like an nda and everything like to use the yeast mm-hmm. um, but i remember how like i told my dad about it and he was like yeah they're letting you use their yeast fullers and i was like yeah that's great and it was like a it was a great moment oh, that's cool yeah and we um yeah exactly like you say that respect that homage or homage to those traditional brewers as well who've been doing it well for a long time um but we see it elsewhere i think people going back to not just british but you know traditional german breweries mm-hmm. czech breweries of course we had on earlier um people are seeking that out i think some of it is value as well because you know, you know that it's going to be good. So if you're spending your money, maybe, you know, you've got to make everything go a little further nowadays. If you know that that brewery, that brand, everything is going to be better, then why not go for that one each time? So, um, yeah, there seems to be a few different things, but certainly have seen that. Uh, to come back, Paul, to your question there, definitely <laughs> see people going back to those traditional sort of styles and things as well at the moment. Um, but yeah, have you got anything, Cal, coming up? Is the you know any collabs, seasonal oh, yeah. specials? Yeah, loads. Doug. Tell us about it. I can definitely remember all of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're actually, well, actually, we're releasing a best bitter on Monday mm-hmm. with uh, Eddie Gad. Okay. Um, big fan. Mm-hmm. He he runs a brewery called Gads, the <laughs> Ramsgate Brewery. Yeah. Um, and they're traditional sort of ale brewing, but we've mm-hmm. just installed a carbon capture. So right. it's still to capture the unit. So uh-huh. it, um, from fermentation or mm-hmm. back from packaging, it like compresses gas into liquid and we can yeah. it back and we can use it again. Mm-hmm. So it, it's like old school German and brewers have been doing this for like a hundred years because they're not allowed to use CO2, but like it's like a new version of it that compresses it down, a bit easier to store. Mm-hmm. He's been really helpful. He's given us like, well, like a ton of information. He answers all my questions about Nice. Uh, like weird gases and stuff um but so we did a couple of with him we made a best bitter based on his best bitter 
um that's coming out next week uh that's pretty good and then oh what else we got a lot of stuff at least really fun sour yesterday like last week guava nice. peach and something yeah i pay a lot of attention to these things when they're coming out don't you worry you guava and peach sounds pretty pulse. good by itself <laughs> yeah yeah Oh, Attic or Coat of Oak. Coat of Oak. I don't know who Coat of, Coat of Oak are, but I'm in. Nice name. Um, and Attic Bruco. I do like Attic Bruco. Um, I don't actually get in charge. I'm not in charge of collabs. I sit on like the lower echelons of emails in that sort of friend. It sort of happens. And then I get CC'd in to like talk about like the, the nuance of what's happening. But uh, yeah, I'm not in charge of those. Sorry, Colin. Um, yeah. Oh, well, well, they sound... Pretty exciting though to look out for. Best bit and a, a peach sour as well, back to back is uh, that shows the range though, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. I think we make a lot of sour beer now. Um, mm. We always used to struggle with capacity, and then in the new site we don't, and we're seeing actually when we get to make a lot of it and we get a little bit better at certain things, um, mm. what that means and stuff like that. Actually, yeah, which is quite good. Nice. Brilliant. And so um, we'll keep an eye out for it as, of course, like you say, new brewery, more beers coming out and about as well. So are you at any festivals or anywhere we can find you at all? Oh, we've got a peak ender. Of course yeah, we are. Of course. There you go. Thank you. Nice, nice layout there. <laughs> I don't know. I Again, uh, I'm sure the events team would see this and be like, oh, well, I think you read our emails. Um, but um, I think we're doing some craft beer festivals doing Bristol and Fire Festival, which is in Scotland. Mm, yeah, Fine Fest. Fine fest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not fire fest. That's a whole different thing. We don't <laughs> no, fine there. fest. Fine fest. Uh, and then I got an email today about Van Mole. Van Mole Festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love Van Mole. Nice. We did a beer with them with beetroot in it. Yeah. And it stung the whole brewery out of beetroot <laughs> for like two days. Um, nice. It came out pretty good. So we're doing Van Mole Festival. Yeah, very cool. And actually. Have you um, done it before? No, but we... Oh. I think we sent some people before mm -hmm. we did a collab with them and then they were pouring yeah. the collab and some people went over to Netherlands mm -hmm. to do it. Netherlands? Yeah. Netherlands. Um, and then this time we're sending like a pallet beer. I'm going to, going to pour it there, which would be really cool actually. Yeah. Real. Yeah. We've been a few couple of times over the years now and it's been, yeah, great events. You'll love it. It's uh, of course, big windmills and everything like that, but it's, yeah, yeah. no, fantastic event. So enjoy. Thank um, you. Well, no, and of course, like you say, it would be nice to have you up in the Peak District as well, too. So um... here it's good; it's not in the field anymore. I came to the the massive hall uh, when I was there last time, and so that, that's where it used to be, and now it's at the showgrounds. Is this right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So um, it was very nice having it there, but it was also it was a bit trickier to be honest with sure. even just things like parking, shops, getting in and out of it as well. So um, yeah, it's been a lot more easier and more accessible now down at the showground too. So. Nice. Is there um, a lot of breweries? How many breweries are we talking here? Yes. Matt, well, actually, I've done my research on the event at all. I should. I, I can't remember the number of ah. the top of my head. I know you've got me there. But um, don't worry, you won't be alone. There's lots of good ones already coming through and confirmed as well. I'm sure Radin will be down there too. So uh, Steve really looking uh, forward to Pikenda, which is good. So we'll have, um, yeah, we, we will certainly have a good run of it again. Fingers crossed. I went down yesterday. We were doing a bit of a site visit. Uh, and it was, you know, the weather was amazing. So hopefully it holds out this year. Ah, nice. Very nice. We'll see. Probably some rain at some point. So bring your wellies just in case. But, uh... <laughs> I'm bringing my dog. You're allowed to bring dogs to this, right? That's of course. Right. I'm bringing my dog as well. Yes. Very excited about that. I never get to my bring my dog to festivals. So No, it's it's good for that. Like, um, hello. Yeah. When it's nice and dry, my, I've only got a small Boston Terrier. So the year before when it rained insanely or just before, he was not very happy. He was completely brown by the <laughs> Like day. sinking into the mud. Yeah. So. Yeah. We just carried him around in the end. But um, but no, bring your dog. Yeah, it's always uh, it'll be very good down there as well. So um, but yeah. So um, otherwise, Wait, Sierra Nevada coming. Is Sierra Nevada coming? We'll have beers from them there for sure. Oh, um, I've, you know, we've done a lot of, we've done collabs with them over the years and everything too. So they've been a very nice uh, one to team up with. Hopefully better bogs. And actually the reason <laughs> I was on site uh, was we were looking at the toilets. It was very exciting, but we were looking at how they're set up, how they're going to be. Uh, and yes, we are, we are taking that on board this year for sure. So that's, uh, that's, that's fun events level uh, <laughs> stuff there. 
just better toilets just yeah really, yeah let's, let's go scope out the toilets this week yeah it really well they turned up and they're like we're gonna put all these toilets here we've got extra cleaning on for the <laughs> toilets extra toilets themselves so yes we um yeah hopefully you know you'll find out we did change suppliers as well because to be honest we were underwhelmed with the service that we got from it so yeah next uh this year fingers crossed as i was down there myself looking at it i'm going to tell you it'll definitely be better so uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> hopefully anyway but um but yeah so carl is there anything else while we've got you on you know you want to tell us about or anything or uh i oh, know just um, next year go on that's it well russell has been uh he this is one of his favorite beers here so um you know i'll let Russell talk, talk about it. It's, I know you've been very excited to tell everyone a bit more about this one, Russell. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the uh, 500 mil range now. I wasn't I wasn't initially, but I am these days. But yeah, uh, we were lucky enough to get a couple of casks of Horunda at the tap room and we, you know, we tried them with staff and they were, um, I mean, it, it was brilliant, especially at four and a half percent. I'm a huge Jaipur fan. I'd say it every single month I'm on it, but Chinook's in this one uh, with Willamette as well. So, um, so you've got that kind of uh, that bitterness to it. Um, but yeah, sorry, 500 mil bottle condition, so be careful how you pour it. I always try and pour it all in one go uh, as opposed to trying to keep topping my beer up. Um, I find it, um, you know, you, you don't get the yeast element in it. Um, but yeah, really good, pin bright as well. Um, it's a bit of a staple on the bar. It stayed on there for about six weeks. We just kept ordering more and more and more. Horundo uh, brewed in anticipation of spring. Um, I think, uh, it's, is it uh, a swallow? I think it's, it's yeah. uh, Latin for a swallow or, or a bird that's due in the spring, I think uh, was the, the theory behind it. But yeah, great, really bitter beer, um, four and a half percent. Got into that, great head retention as well. Yeah, just brilliant from the 500 mil range, great. Much prefer it in a bottle than I would a can. Um, and it's gone down, uh, it's gone down an absolute storm at the tap room as well. Yeah, I think it's been suiting it nicely, actually, that bottle condition 500 mil for this beer. Absolutely, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, like you said, it, it suits it better than, than sort of canon, I suppose. Um, and I was lucky enough to, I mean, I think the staff tried it and then obviously we can't sell it until Beer Club have had it themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so we knew it was sitting in logistics waiting, but working at the brewery, we're lucky enough to get a case of beer a month for free. And I think everyone had just stuck down and they wanted a case of Horundo um, as part of their allowance for the month. So but we knew it was a winner before we even started. And then we've, we've still got being, more being made now. So it's obviously gone really, really well. Yeah, no, it's, as you say, it has, it's gone very well already so far. It's just fantastic. It's drinkable. It's nice when they jump from being in cask and originally we'd typically move them into can after that, but now we have the ability to do those bottle condition 500 mils and really give it, you know, how it should be in that next level of, uh, you know, being packaged after being cask too. Um, Russell, were you down, were you doing setting up some events this week? Is that right? Yeah, it's been, it's been crazy this week. So I did, um, I was with Radis for the, the Checkmates launch. That was last week. We did that on Tuesday in the tap room. Um, and that guy's mental. He's been really well behaved to that, hasn't he, on, on, on the cameras, but he is nuts. So, uh, yeah, leather aprons, pouring loads of beer. Um, it was really interesting, actually. I had a big jug of beer um, that he gave me, and I said, look, I, I, you know, I love a lager, I love a beer, but I'm, I'm like sick of these half of the tankard full of head. And he said, look, the head's protecting the bubbles, it's protecting the flavour, the smell, <laughs> but it's to, it's to last the entire duration of the beer. And all of a sudden, I got it, and I was like, "Oh my god, yeah, that that honestly, that's what it's for." So, I will never slate a German, Dutch, Czech bit, you know, ever again. You know, it was um, it was really good to learn some things from uh, from Radis. So, we did that, um, and then I think uh, it was in uh, Leeds and then London on Thursday. Then we had a full weekend. We had Led Zeppelin, not the actual Led Zeppelin, but we had a, a tribute act on Friday, which was great in the tap room, really well attended. Um, which is a fantastic event. And then, yeah, uh, yesterday and today, I've been at um, Bearded Theory down uh, Catton Hall near Burton, just setting up there. So we're providing loads and loads of beer for that event. I think are we had an official sponsor because... We had yeah, the bar, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's a huge amount of storm with beer there. So there's Jaipur, there's mm -hmm. Market Portal or Bar Falls, there's AMPM, which is obviously gluten-free. 
and then we've done them their own bearded theory beer as well which is really similar to our Astrid so um so yeah I've been I've been down there for the last couple of days which would be great you know the setup's really really cool down there so if anyone's able to get down there or can still get some tickets then it's it's definitely well worth the visit yeah are you going down are you there at the weekend then as well Russell or are you just uh, helping in the setup it's it's funny you should say that yeah we were we had some staff tickets on the grabs that were we were all entered into a draw for and I was lucky enough to uh to win a set um however i do work in a tap room where it's busy at the weekend so i'm working friday and saturday but i might be able to sneak out on sunday and get myself down there for the day so yeah i'm hoping to go there sunday uh try some of the beers out definitely some of the casks as well as i've literally i think i've racked about 92 cask beers over the last two days and then called them tapped them I've come home absolutely stinking of beer, which I know I think everyone thinks is the best job in the world. It's really not. Not in this heat either. You just stink. But um, but it's been good fun. Yeah, yeah. We, we really enjoyed ourselves. No, that's good. I think it's going to be, I mean, if this weather holds out, it's going to be a while at uh, Bearded Theory. We've done it for a few years now. It's always a big drinking and music festival. So um, yeah, that's certainly, your efforts won't go, you know, unrewarded, I don't think, down there. So. No, I hope people enjoy the beer there at least anyway. Yeah, because there's some, there's some great product on. Um, and really reasonable prices as well. Like, I've been to some festivals already this year where it's kind of eight, nine quid a pint, but it's kind of six, five and a half pound a pint there. So um, they've, they've done really well there. And the setup's really good. I think Primal Screamer headline in their playing on Sunday. There's, uh, it's really, really well laid out, really family friendly as well dog friendly i know we spoke about that earlier on so um yeah it's it's, it's great really really good it's gonna be good um on that charlotte uh, are we at any other events at the minute that we can um where people might be able to find us um yeah well obviously better theory um one thing russell didn't mention is the beer list i got i'm sure we're taking cans of checkmates down so if oh my you, god yeah we are yeah if you haven't managed to get checkmates and you've missed ordering it online um if you're at bearded theory you should be able to get a can <laughs> um but we're also at Kirkstall um great exhibition of prize ales on saturday the 27th this weekend um right. we're launching three new cask beers um you might have seen that um on instagram today um but yeah if you want to be the first to try any of those beers then head down there on saturday I think that's it for this month, really. Um, we've got a few other. We've got quite a busy few months coming up, but I'll talk about that next month. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte. Yeah, find us uh, hopefully out and about as as you say there as well. We won't be Steve at uh, Liverpool Craft Beer Expo this year, I'm afraid. Um, we've of course loved it over the years and attended it very regularly, but it's just uh, clashed with too many other bits and pieces, unfortunately, this year. So um, we won't, but uh, we will be out and about as you can find us and. As Charlotte mentioned, we'll have lots of um, prize ales on, uh, lots of exciting beers pouring at the festival there too. So if you like, the, we talked to Carl with Carl about these traditional beer styles. So uh, that's one to check out if you're Leeds or close to Leeds as well at Kirkstall too. Um, and so we've still got some more beers to talk through as well here. So let me crack on to our second only Golding's Hot Beer of the evening. Um, which is, you know, we again, going back to old beer styles and things like that, not something you might say a couple of years ago, um, but it's been really fun to, you know, play around with Goldings in two very different ways. So um, this one, you know, we're doing our classic Quiet Storms, the Pale Ale series, always single hop. So sometimes these, you know, brand new, exciting, uh, you know, renowned American hops, some of the traditional sea hops you might get. We've worked with some of the more recent English hop styles. Uh, and this time we want to pay homage to, homage to, you know, Goldings. One of these has been around for hundreds of years, since the 1700s. Um, and it just, you know, works so well. There's a reason it's been around for that long. So we added it in here. Um, and gives you hopefully just that very drinkable as you'd expect from the Quiet Storm series. Um, but it allows you to experience, you know, this style of beer as well um, in that traditional format. So if you drink this, if you drink Checkmates and see the Goldings and hopefully get a bit of a flavor for it as well there, um, hopefully people have enjoyed the Goldings too. So let us know what you think in the latest series. Again, we'll swap it around next month. We'll be going... Uh, more European for our next hop bill as well after that. 
Um, and Steve just noticed Colmore Mild on the socials as well. So yeah, that's going to be one. Uh, again, going back, you know, we've been doing all these going round with the traditional styles as well. So um, do get yourself down to Kirk still if you are a fan of those traditional beer styles too. Um, again, talking about Goldings and single hopped ones as well there. Um, I meant to ask Russell, did you have a food pairing for Hirundo? Did I cut you off? Uh, or, uh, we got what, I've, um, so I've gone straight from Bearded Theory, straight <laughs> to Birmingham, see some friends. So I've got no food pairings, so no props. That's not because Jim went and sat me last week after I put a ice lolly into his, uh, his sour. He found it quite funny when I spoke to him the next day. But um, but yeah, nothing this week, but there'll be, there'll be twice as many next month. Good. Well, we'll hold you to that, Russell. Don't you worry. Absolutely, so. yeah. Um, but that one, I mean, talking of food pairings, of course, so that was the sort of quiet storm. Let us know in the chat on the side what you think of this one as well. Um, but this almost does it for you a little bit here, Russell. I know you've been enjoying the next part in the series as well. Um, has this been one of your favourites this time around? How are you finding it? Um, yeah, I mean, I love it. I mean, the, the feedback we got off some of the parlors that, I mean, everyone comes into the shop and they say, um, you know, I like dark beers, like stouts, what can you offer me? And I call it the pudding range. We just our, our tiramisu, our sticky toffee, Rocky Road, pecan pie. Um, but some of them, some people say, oh, yeah, I don't like anything too sweet. And, and I know the Rocky Road and the sticky toffee probably were. This, I don't think this one is. Um, loads of, loads of uh, cacao, uh, espresso in this one. Um, uh, not too bitter, um, but still, still kind of, uh, you know, got that really that depth in flavour that you need for a, a tiramisu. That kind of that picked me up, you know, that's kind of a, I'll, I'll have a bit of a tequila, come on, let's get on with it. Um, 8% Imperial Stout. It's just our big boozy stout that we, we then put some flavour in with. It's, um, I think it's great, yeah, really, really good. Um, it's been really an well anticipated, uh, but at the same time, I've seen what's coming out in the rest of the beer boxes, James. So um, I can't say this is my favourite of the year so far. That's all I'll say. No, it's, I agree with you, though. You're right on that. Um, whereas we've had the sweeter ones at times as well. Whereas this, that coffee, it's much sharper. It should give you that nice mouthfeel to it as well. Uh, and it will cut through that big imperial style in it as well. So um, it will give you a bit of a difference from the last ones that we've tried. Um, and again, a fun one to keep going in there. Uh, I just saw, yeah, uh, Tom, you are correct. It is Solero in the next month as well um so we will be working our way through as always a series of the different ones too um quiet storm would be a fantastic shandy yes uh i mean i'd agree with you there especially on a nice warm day why not eh? if you enjoy it that way it's um yeah a good way to go but this is a, a nice dessert so you're teasing a little bit there russell of course we'll have some um big part of course continuing through the year as well um but we have yeah as always quite a few coming out too the quiet storm will continue into next month um and we'll have more exciting collabs as well um and just making sure if i didn't miss any uh questions steve saw the real led zeppelin that's pretty good going there yeah we'll uh sadly couldn't book them properly in the tap room but no uh, not, not afraid not steve but uh i think it was either steve or colin that mentioned natic brew company Mm -hmm. Just to go back to that point as well, I'm in Birmingham tonight. I'm definitely heading to their tap room either tonight or tomorrow. Attic Brew, brilliant company. James, I think I've stuck a can of beer. Wow. That, was, that was the first can of beer I think I gave you after I joined the company last year. Intuition Pale, uh, what a what a brew that is. But yeah, yeah, we couldn't. Um, so we didn't have a we didn't have the money or the time to uh, get the real heads up in, we, but we got the next best thing. <laughs> yeah, no, but you're right. Glasshouse, the... Colin Glasshouse, don't ah, stop telling yeah. me that. I'll be there tonight. <laughs> That's uh yeah, I'll uh, I'll be heading down there tomorrow. So um yeah, great Birmingham breweries. That's where I, that's where I am this evening. There you go. Attic, yeah, you yeah, I do remember that was uh, you bought me one over and tried it and it was fantastic. Actually one of the first ones I'd had from them. So it was great to try it. So thank you for that. And um yeah, it's uh, it sounds good as well if you can do both if they're five minutes walk, as Tom just says there as well. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've been to uh, Tom will know I've been to uh North north brew tap room this mm -hmm. afternoon as well i've only you know had a couple there uh i met the guys there so it was uh, that was good fun as well but um and then visit the colmore road this year as well one of ours in, in collaboration so um so yeah thornbridge through and through me today after mm -hmm. after being at the festival all day as well and a, and a bit of sun so yeah if you guys are in birmingham or if anyone's nearby it's definitely well worth a visit if you're not then get yourself into bakewell get yourself to the tap room 
plenty of offers on over the bank holiday weekend for takeaway beer. If you can't get it in Tesco, which I couldn't get in Jaipur in Tesco, I, I, I always head down the beer aisle to see what's in and out of stock. And uh, Jaipur is out of stock, so get yourself there or online and get yourself ordering it. Yeah, don't worry. We're brewing more, so it'll be uh, we can <laughs> back soon in time. I think, as you say, people are stocking up well in time for the uh, the long weekend coming up as well. Very hopeful that this weather continues as it has been, um, and we can have a very nice sunny one for it too. So, um, yeah, Colin and Tom uh, hopefully meeting up, um, yeah, in the Colmore as well. So certainly the place to be at the minute, it seems, Birmingham for uh, tap rooms, bars, everything else as well. Um, but yeah, I think uh, that takes us through all the beers this evening. We've had, uh, you know, of course, we've been joined from the Czech Republic, which is always very exciting. Uh, and we'll be seeing lots more of Radim as, as we go around as well. Um, thank you, Carl, if you can still hear me on there for joining us. Um, and, you know, I know it's been a Wednesday, so uh, slightly different from our usual one as well. Um, but thank you to everyone for, as always, taking the time, joining in. It's been very lively in the chat this evening, which is always fantastic. Um, hopefully you're all enjoying the rest of the beers as well. Um, and we'll be letting everyone know all about next month too. When a June's box is going to be sent out, we will have them earlier in June. I know they were a little late, unfortunately, with some of the different beers that we had coming in. So um, yeah, they'll be earlier in the month for sure, but we'll keep everyone updated uh, via email and socials as well on that too. So um, hopefully you enjoy the rest of your May boxes, enjoy your June box. And yeah, thank you all guys. Thank you very much. It's been a very fun evening as always chatting to everyone. So cheers. Have a good night.